Hi, thank you so much for joining. I'm Jonathan Rumi. For those who've been using the Halo app for a while now, you know that I've been so blessed to narrate a ton of amazing content and good news, there's even more coming soon. For those of you who don't know what Halo is, it's an app built by Catholics, but is an amazing resource for Christians everywhere with thousands of guided meditations and prayers, including the daily gospel reflections, audio Bible readings from yours truly, Bible stories for sleep, uh, peaceful Christian music, and meditations for finding peace and overcoming anxiety. With me today, I'm super excited to have Maddie Pruitt, who is here uh, recording a guest session on the app. And we're here to talk about it, among many other things, including a book that you've got talking mm -hmm. about. So we're going to get into all of it right now. With that, let's start with a prayer, as always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you for joining us here today, for being with us, for sending down your spirit to be present among us, to enrich this conversation, to guide our conversation, to inspire those who are watching to a life of deeper prayer and reflection with you. Uh, may we get to know your son ever more by the end of this time together. May we always uh, see you in everyone whom we meet May we be constantly reminded of the graces and the blessings that you give us on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And may we always ask for the protection of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm great. Yeah. I'm doing really good. You ever do one of these things before? <sighs> a few times, yeah. you know. I've I've been in front of a camera a few times. Yeah. I've never done this before. So really? Just bear with Interesting. Me. <laughs> okay, first time for everything. I don't get to interview people very often, so mm. so we'll just have to see. What We're just gonna like. wing it. We're just gonna wing We're it. We're just gonna wing it. That's the uh, best kind of interviews. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so um, for people that don't know you and your story mm -hmm. um, a little bit. You you were on season 24 of The Bachelor. The Bachelor. And that finished up a little while ago. 2020, March of 2020. March of 2020. Tell us a little bit about what that experience was like. Well, it was crazy. <laughs> what led you to, to, to be on the show? How do you even get on the show? So I don't know how other people get on the show. I got applied. It wasn't something that I pursued. It wasn't something I even had on my radar. Mm -hmm. I always like to joke because I'd actually just graduated Bible college Whoa. and I was pursuing to be a pastor and so um, our speaker, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, a per it's a perfect send off. It's yes. like the send off into <laughs> preaching. No, I had just graduated Bible college and I had just started working at a foster care and adoption organization wow. and knew that I was called to ministry, knew I wanted to do something that added value to people and helps people, but I didn't know exactly what that looked like. And it was a very interesting season of my life, and I was just kind of praying through it. And I ended up having some friends who submitted my application for The Bachelor without me knowing. Whoa. And so when I get a call, I was obviously not expecting it. And I always joke because, you know, I get a call and they're like, hey, is this Madison? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, this is so-and-so from The Bachelor. We're wondering if you were still interested in coming on our show. And at first, I literally thought it was a prank call. I was like, which one of my friends like is prank calling me right now? And, you know, as they're continuing to talk to me, I'm like, no, this is legit. This is real. And I was like, I'm sorry. I just want to be sure that you know, like, this isn't really, I don't, I think you're like talking to the wrong Madison. Like, I just graduated seminary. Like, I don't really think I'm the girl you're looking for. Like, I was all kinds of confused. But, you know, after I got off the call and, you know, I called my mom right after and just thinking she was going to be like, yeah, absolutely not. We're not going on The Bachelor. Like, what are you talking about? And instead, she, like a wise mother should, you know, just was like, hey, before you make any kind of decisions, just take a second and pray about it. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I wasn't expecting that, but all right, mom. And so I did. And I took like the next few months to just really pray about it. I brought in like my pastors and my family and just didn't really bring anybody else into it. I was just like, listen, I just want it to be like, you guys are like my prayer warriors. And like, let's just really pray about this and figure out like why this opportunity has come about, why this has kind of landed in my lap. And um, through that time of praying through it, I just, through so many, I mean, it would take me like 45 minutes to explain to you like everything that happened and like how the Lord really spoke to me. But mm -hmm. there's so many different instances and moments. Like I just really felt like the Lord was like, this is where I need you to go. 
And I don't know if you're familiar with The Bachelor at all, but um, it doesn't okay. really make sense for someone who's like wanting to go and like spread the gospel. So I'm like, hmm, okay, this is interesting. And on top of that, you know, people who had been on the show before had kind of like been portrayed in not the best light mm -hmm. for their convictions and beliefs and in, in their faith and following Jesus. And so it was almost like, okay, Lord, you know, I don't really want to be made fun of. Like, I don't really want to be made to look like something I'm not. I don't want to be misunderstood. And so there were so many different thoughts going through my head, but I just remember the Lord just constantly speaking to me, like, trust me, trust me, like, this is where I need you to go. And so I, it was one of those moments where I was like, okay, I'm going to be obedient, whatever the cost, whatever it looks like, wherever you lead me, like I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. And so I went on there having no idea what I was doing, literally had no idea what I was signing up for, didn't know anything about the show. I had never watched the show before. And, and they don't tell you. And they don't, <laughs> no one prepared me. And it was probably a good thing. I think you if I had watched it. who submitted you didn't even tell you? No, I like found out through the call. Like, totally through the call. And then they thought it was like so funny. And they're like, you know, if you go on it, like you're probably going to win. Right. And I was like, no, I was like, and I'm not going on it. So what are you even talking about? And I went on it and I thought, you know, I honestly genuinely thought going on the bachelor, like I was like, okay, maybe, you know, I'm here to just like be here for these girls or I'm just, you know, I, I didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't know how long I was going to be there. I had no idea how the Lord was going to use me during that time. All I knew was that I felt called to do it. And I just obeyed. And so I went and ended up, you know, staying all the way to the very end. And it was uh, me and Peter in the Bachelor finale. And uh, yeah, it was quite the quite the journey, quite the experience. My faith was tested in ways that I never had experienced before in my life. Mm -hmm. But the Lord provided for me in such incredible ways throughout that time that I can't even put into words. It was just crazy. Um, being in such, you know, dark environments, just really feeling Jesus even in those like dark moments and just seeing him show up. It was so cool. And and now looking back, you know, since then and being removed, I've had so many people, you know, come up to me and just share that they've given their hearts to Christ and that they've decided to save themselves from marriage because of just hearing what I had to say and what I believe and like what I stood up for and just in sharing my testimony and story. And so it's been so cool. And I always tell people, I'm like, that's not to point at me, but to point at God that he could use someone like me and something like The Bachelor to glorify his name. Yeah. And it just shows that you never can put God in a box because <laughs> he can move and work in any situation with anyone. So yeah, that's the crazy Bachelor story. <laughs> so And, and it, it is sort of... Um an additional testimony to a, a monk once said this to me is that God knows precisely what he's doing, hmm. like precisely what he's doing. He's outside of time. He's outside of space. He can use whomever he wants. He can use the most broken of us or the most um, accomplished of us to do his will. But that only happens if we're doing what you did, which is being obedient to him right. and surrendering to him. Was there any point in while you were on the show, did you feel like, okay, how can I minister to these people? Yeah. I think what's so crazy is when I felt called to go on the show, I really honestly was like, I don't really want to even talk about my faith. Like, I really just want them to see something in me. Mm -hmm. And for that, you know, one of my biggest prayers since I've been a little girl was just like, Lord, I want my spirit to be the most attractive thing about me. Mm -hmm. And I want that to be what draws other people to me. I don't want it to be how I dress, you know, who who I'm a re like related to or what I do for a living or what I look like. Like, I want my spirit, my heart, my love for you to be the most beautiful thing. And so it was so cool to see that play out. Like, mm -hmm. even in an environment that that, you know, should be so competitive where all the girls should be like, I mean, and, and probably some of them were, but I mean, in an environment that's so competitive and everyone's competing against each other, like I was able to just have so much confidence and so much peace and so much joy and faith during that time. And I think that even for the other girls on the show, they were so surprised by that and kind of drawn to that. And so I would even have, you know, girls come up being like, hey, like, will you like lead a Bible study for us? Like, we're really wow. struggling. Um, I would have other girls come up, be like, how are you so confident right now? Like, I'm really struggling. Like, I'm comparing myself to other people. I'm questioning my own worth, but you seem to just like, just be so cool, calm and collected. Like, how are you able to do that? And even The Bachelor re recognizing that and 
it was just really cool in those moments to be like, because my confidence isn't in myself, like my hope isn't in me. And I'm also not striving for validation in getting a rose or in being picked by the bachelor. Like I know who I am and I'm able to live from that place of abundance rather than lack of trying to search for, for that in someone else or in something else. And so it was just really cool, like being able to, instead of like, I don't know, like I wasn't having to like shove it down anyone's throat or, you know, sit down and have comp- like, it was just like, I just lived my life and they saw that there was something different about me. And so they were attracted to that and they were drawn to that and they were curious about it. And so it led to some really, really cool conversations, but there were definitely some hard moments. I mean, you're removed from a lot of things that you're used to being dependent on. Like, you know, I don't, there's a lot of things I didn't have access to. I didn't have my family or my church or, you know, certain things that has kind of poured into like who you are, you know, and who's made you, you your whole life. And so it was really like this crazy level of dependence that I had to have on the Lord throughout that time of just like, okay, Lord, this is kind of lonely and this is very out of my comfort zone, but it's me and you in this thing. So like, let's do it. Let's do it together. And yeah, it was, it was so cool to see, like, even in a crazy environment like that, like just having so many moments, you know, even in the smallest of things, like I would write verses on my hands, like in my, with my pen every day, every time I would have like my morning devotional and people would ask me, you know, what, what does that verse say? Like, what does that mean? And it was like, they were used to, you know, and I would wear my, my Saint, my hero bracelets. And I I would have those on literally every single day on the show. And so people would ask me about that. And Mm -hmm. I got, I kind of got to share, you know, like this one stands for prayer. This one stands for blessing and just kind of share that with them and, and what it meant to me. And so it was just, it was just really cool, like finding little moments, but really just like being a person of, of faith and of confidence and of joy in a way that attracted people to that. How beautiful. Do you feel that any of the girls, um, at that point after the show, even that, that, maybe their paths or their their walk with Christ were changed in some way or or they they didn't have one and now that they had one thanks to to meeting you and, and hearing you talk and, and sharing yeah I I'm trying to say this all getting emotional but it's been so it's been so cool to see like even some of the girls like on my season and like even some of the guys and girls on other seasons who have like come up to me and like had encounters with the Lord or who have just asked me so many questions and through certain conversations, like they've given their heart to Jesus and they've gotten like rebaptized or just like rededicated their life to Christ. And it's just been so cool. And it's such a humbling moment of just like, man, like, The fact that God would just choose to use someone like me is just so cool. And that's what he wants for all of us, you know, like he wants to use all of us and we all can be a part of, of a story and moment like that. And it was just the fact that I said yes, and I obeyed. And I just think that there's so much blessing that comes with obedience. And so it's been really cool to see just how many cool conversations have been had and how many lives have been like, even for my birthday, I sat down with like four or five of the girls and I wasn't expecting, but they like all went around the table and just like all talked about how like just Maddie, by you living out your faith and standing up for your like convictions and what you believe in, you know, like it's made such a difference in my faith journey and in what I'm looking for. And I'm just like over here crying and I'm like, I don't even cry, but I'm crying. Like, this is so crazy. Um, but yeah, I've definitely had a lot of moments like that. And it's just, and it, and it honestly just encourages me because I'm like, man, this is what I'm here for. Like, this is what it's about. And so it's just, it's been, it's been really cool to see that. That's awesome. There's a phrase that comes to mind. I can't remember if it was said by a saint, but, uh, at all times preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. Hmm. So it sounds like you've been, yeah living the gospel and yeah. preaching the gospel just by example of your life, yeah. which is awesome. And I think, I think, I agree with you. I think everyone is called to do that. And I think so many people, especially now with what, you know, we're struggling with culturally, yeah. um, uh, politically, with, with all the insanity that's going on, it's so important to have a sort of a spiritual grounding of some sort, you know, yeah. like whether it's just, um, an active prayer life, or if it's a consistently doing good works for people, helping people, just you know, right. knowing that uh, you can very dramatically change somebody's life by even some of the, the most um, humble actions, yeah. you know. And so, out of this has has been born this platform for you uh, that now you have people that are are really drawn to you to to try to 
hear more of what you want to share. And especially now you've been prepared in ministry school. Mm -hmm. You get on the show. You've got a huge audience now, a platform. And it's like, it's almost like your own congregation. In right. A way, you know? Yeah. And you get to do what you love. And, and now you've got a book coming out. Got a book coming out. Tell us about the book. Made for this moment. Yeah. Standing firm in strength, grace, and courage. And really the idea behind the book, before I went on The Bachelor, the verse that was laid on my heart was Esther 4.14, mm -hmm. where it talks about, for maybe you've been called to this royal position for such a time as this. And I remember just coming off of the show and the questions that people asked me. Because I was like, okay, I, I actually felt led to write a book before I ever went on The Bachelor. So I'd actually written a whole book before I even went on the show. Oh, wow. And but when I came off and I had agencies and publishers reaching out to me, I was like, you know, I want to kind of reframe this book because I want it to be something where I'm not just telling my story. Like, yes, maybe that's parts of it, but it's really adding value to people. And I'm answering the questions that everyone's asking me and questions that people are hungry to know the answer to. And so many people kept asking me, you know, how were you able to, you know, stand firm with the whole world watching? How are you able to stand firm under pressure and, and stay true to yourself and stay true to your beliefs and your convictions? And how are you able to, like, how are you so confident like, how are you so, all of these things. And so I was like, okay, how can I take all of that and then turn it into a message that can help them and add value to them? And so I talk about a lot throughout my book that how we, you know, respond to pressure matters, but how we prepare matters just as much. And so it's a lot to do, you know, with being able to stand firm under pressure doesn't just happen from a place of just adrenaline and hoping that you have what it takes in the heat of the moment, but it's the moments leading up to that moment that prepare you to be able to stand firm. And I talk a lot about, you know, just the importance of having that intimate relationship with the Lord and having those quiet and alone moments with the Lord to where you're really feeding your spirit and you're investing in in those quiet moments is when you're discovering like, who am I? What do I really believe? What does God's word say? And really where you're building that faith so that when moments of pressure come or when storms of life come or whatever it is, temptation comes at you, like you already have what it takes to stand. And I always like to say when pressure hits, what's inside of you is what's gonna come out of you. And so it matters what's inside. It matters how you're preparing and how you're spending those alone and quiet moments. And, you know, I think we, you know, live in a in a world where everyone values like the big moments that everyone sees and that everyone applauds. And, you know, when you get the retweets and the likes and go viral and all of these things and it's like, yeah, but it's the smaller moments, the quiet moments, the intimate moments with the Lord that really set us up and get us ready for those moments or you're not going to have what it takes to stand firm. And so I talk a lot about that. Um, I also talk a lot about confidence and, um, you know, courage and just kind of tackling fear and moving past your past. Um, I think a lot of times our past likes to like to hold us back and keep us limited and keep us bound. And so I really confront a lot of, you know, questions and issues and struggles that I feel like a lot of people have come to me with. But yeah, really just my heart is like just telling people like, man, you were made on purpose and for a purpose. Like God has such beautiful plans for you. And I just, I've seen like too many people just live their life, laying their heads down at night, just crying themselves to sleep, wondering like, is this all there is? Like, is there more out there? And just wondering like, what? What, what is there to this life and why am I even here and so really just encouraging people like there is a reason that you're here you're no accident you were fearfully and wonderfully made and God has a plan and purpose for your life and it's really even so much bigger than you mm -hmm. and it was made to you were made to make a difference and to add value to people and so you know just talking all about that and just hoping that the book is encouraging to people and inspiring to people but not from a place of i have it all figured out but from a place of like hey i'm locking arms with you like i'm in the trenches with you and just like let's go through this together yeah um in that preparation how important is prayer mm -hmm. as part of the preparation yeah prayer is every honestly prayer is like one of my most favorite things in the entire world um, you know, leading up to me going on The Bachelor, I was actually in a season, it was about a year long season, where I was going through a heartbreak, I was working a job that I, did, I knew it was where I was supposed to be, but I, I didn't love it and I didn't feel like it was, you know, what I was designed to do. I, you know, was in a new city and a place where I, I don't know, I felt very alone, just very lonely and just struggling in a lot of ways. 
And it's like now looking back, even though that season at the time was so hard for me, now looking back, that season was so crucial. Mm -hmm. And during that time, it was really a season of preparation. And it was literally like me and Jesus every single day. Like I, that was like the only person I spent time with. And so I would just come home every single day and it was just like hours and hours just in God's word and just praying. And it was so beautiful, you know? And I think prayer has this connotation tied to it of, you know, it's it's very distant or it's very, um, I don't know, like there, it, I just feel like a lot of people take the intimacy and relationship out of it. Mm. And for me, that was such a, crucial and beautiful time of just like me and the Lord. And I, I just like, I, you know, I would talk, I would listen, like I would cry, I would jump up and down and rejoice. Like it just was beautiful. And I believe that prayer is relational and it's also powerful, you know? And, um, and I've just seen it literally, ch I've seen it change things. And so I feel like for me, it's just, it's been so big. And even like throughout when I was on the show, I mean, there were moments where I didn't have time to like go and have a, 30 minute devotional or anything like that. And all I had was my thoughts and I just would close my eyes and I just would say a little prayer. And like, that would be what would get me through like some of the hardest moments ever. And so I, I mean, prayers completely changed my life and transformed my life. And, you know, that's, it's something that means a lot to me. And so I know that even through like the hardest moments that I've been in, like prayer has been the like most important thing, like in getting me through those moments. Yeah. And now you'll, your meditations will be available on the Hello app. Mm -hmm. how, how does it feel to have your um, prayers and meditations available with thousands of other meditations and prayers on Hello app? And have you, have you heard any of the other prayers that are on the app? And is there anything that, that sticks out to you or like that is one of your favorite things? Have you found any other yeah. folks to listen to on the app that you like? So I, I mean, I'm just like so excited because I think, you know, everyone offers a different, you know, mindset and perspective and experience because we're all, our callings are different. Our voices are different. Our experiences in life are different. And, you know, my, my hope is just that through anything that I do, you know, that I add value, that I add value to people, that I encourage people. And, um, you know, I just would hope that through, you know, my, you know, prayers and meditations that people would just know that they're not alone and that um, they're a part of something so much bigger than themselves and that we're all struggling. And even though, you know, they may not be acting or on a reality TV show, that we all go through struggles. And even though it may not look the same on the outside, it leaves the same feelings oftentimes on the inside. And so just knowing like, hey, I'm here with you. I've like, I'm covering you in prayer. I love you. I believe in you. And also just sharing with them things that, you know, I feel like God has kind of revealed to me throughout different seasons of my life when maybe I was struggling with confidence and identity, or maybe I was struggling with what is my purpose? Why on earth am I here? And when I was struggling with finding, you know, godly community and life-giving relationships and all of these different things. And so just being able to speak life into those areas of maybe struggle or darkness for certain people, um, I mean, that's just, that's my hope and everything that I do. And I, you know, I do a good bit of, of speaking and writing and that's always just my prayer. And before I do anything, like I, I always pray for every single person who's going to be listening or reading or whatever it is. And um, so just for them to know like, hey, I may not necessarily know your name. I may not necessarily know your struggle, but you've been prayed over and you've been prayed for and you're loved and you're seen and you're heard and you're not alone. And so that's just like my my heart in doing all of this. Oh, well, that's beautiful. And I think um, the, the wider Hello community, I think will really appreciate having your voice in the app as well. Yeah. Um, as a part of a, a diverse lineup of voices totally. in the app and uh, uh, diversity of prayers and meditations mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, tell us when the book comes out. So the book comes out October 19th. October 19th. October 19th. It's Are you excited? Here. I'm so excited. I feel like it has been a long time coming, long time waiting. And How are you going to celebrate? So I don't even know. I'm like, I, I can't even like picture it because I feel like I've been waiting for it for so long. Um, but there's been a lot of tears, you know, a lot of good tears, a lot of stressed tears. And I'm just so excited. Like, really, I mean, 
honestly, like I just have been thinking about every person that's just going to pick up the book. And so I'm like, man, over these past like, couple years, like I've been fighting for them. I've been praying for them. I've been um, just honestly, like I feel like I've been carrying a lot of weight and burdens that I feel like they're probably walking through that. And I'm able to just really empathize, you know, kind of with them and what they're struggling with. And so I don't know. I'm just like so excited, really. And just pray that it's it, obviously it's not the ultimate truth and that it'll just lead them to the ultimate truth and that it'll just help them get even closer to Jesus wherever they're at in their spiritual journeys. Um, you know, some may be believers, non-believers, and just wherever they're at, that through reading my story and just feeling God's presence, that they would just be so drawn to the Lord and want to know more. So let's switch things up a little bit. I want to hear I want to hear from you. I have a question for you. Uh-oh. So you act. I do. You have been in probably a very different industry of probably not having a ton of people who maybe think like you, live like you, talk like you, whatever. And I'm sure that's been really difficult in certain moments. How have you found yourself able to stay true to your convictions and beliefs and not compromise and really be able to live out your faith and stand firm in your beliefs, even in a darker environment and industry like you're in? Well, thank you for asking. Um, I think God made it a little easier for me in that he kind of forced me into this position. Uh, he didn't really give me a choice. I didn't, you know, I would work from time to time. Um, I've done a lot of jobs, a lot of TV jobs, a lot of voiceover jobs, but it was never anything that was super consistent. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, at the end of the day, I ended up struggling for most of the eight years I had been in LA um, after having left New York, after having been successful in New York and starting over mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles. Um, it was way harder than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. They don't really tell you that your credits don't transfer. You know, if you've done jobs in New York, uh, you think, ah, it's New York, you know, if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere, you know? Right. Um, that's not true. Like, if, unless you're on a series already and somebody wants you to come out there to do another series or to do a movie or something, mm -hmm. when you come out here, even with decent credits, they're like, yeah, we don't know you. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll let you know. I'm like, Oh, okay, and even just, I, I got an agent when I got out here, and I, I couldn't get arrested. Like, I was with an agency for eight months, and I didn't get a single audition. And I wondered, I'm like, why did they even sign me? Like, what was, what was the, the thought process there? So I just kind of kept doing my thing. I've always, I've always sort of felt like a, an industry outsider in that way. I don't have a traditional, you know, Hollywood look. I don't have the profile of a typical American actor so uh, i would get very specific character kind of parts I, i've played a lot of french guys so i do like foreign characters um probably aside from playing jesus in my career um i've played french guys a lot mm -hmm. and so i just i have that yeah. kind of non-american look so it wasn't it, there wasn't a lot for me to go on so i, I never really felt like i had to Compromise because, like, I felt like nobody cared. It didn't matter. You know, I'm just, well, I'm just mm -hmm. here doing my own thing. So, yeah. whatever. And yeah. then getting cast in The Chosen, it was the first time that I actually had it was a lead on a series. Mm -hmm. And it came at a point in my life where literally three months prior, I was broke. I had enough food for the day. Like, on this, I woke up on a, a a Saturday morning in May in 2018, and I was massively in debt. I was completely broke. Um, I had, uh, you know, a month's worth of bills ahead of me. I had been juggling six or seven different side hustles, uh, and I couldn't get arrested to, for a catering job, you know? And I, I never catered. I worked in the film industry in production, like behind the scenes, so I always had that. And then I came out here and was just like, I went for broke. So I was just trying to be, be working solely as an actor. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to this point, eight years later, I didn't have, I felt like I had nothing to show for it. And it was at that point where I literally fell to my knees in prayer, mm -hmm. staring at, at my crucifix, telling God like, you know what, 
I surrender. Mm. I can't do this anymore like this. You've, I've asked you to show me a different way. If there's something else that I should be doing, some other way that you should be, that I should be using these gifts that you've given me, show me, but you haven't. Mm. So now all this stuff that's in front of me, all of the, the, the mountain of stress and anxiety and the uncertainty, I'm not gonna deal with it anymore because you said your burden is easy. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, no, you're, uh, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so I'm gonna give you mine because I have no other choice. Yeah. I have no choice. Mm -hmm. And then that very day, like I had four checks in the mail from sources that I had, I, I have no idea what, the, what job is. This was like years ago, like a job that hadn't paid me residuals in like five years. All of a sudden they're like, oh, we forgot to pay it for five years. And it just came in and I was like, Wow. What? And everything changed. And I immediately realized at that point that my life now is about surrendering mm. to God. My career was about surrendering to God. It's like I had surrendered and I committed in certain areas, but my, my, my business, my career, I, I had, I'd be like, no, I got this. I, I'm the actor God. I, I know what to do. I know what to do. And I had no, and he was like, okay, let's see how that goes. Yeah. And, and when I finally just said, now man, you please, mm. you take it. You help me because I can't do this anymore. And he did. And, and uh, it's just been a completely different trajectory since. Mm. So um, I never felt that I, I had the same, that I would have had the same probably, um, same kinds of, of struggles for yeah. like, you know, fitting in or like, uh, um, right. you know, having to, defy or, or, or um, uh, appeal to certain expectations, because for me, there weren't any, because I was nobody. I'm still nobody in the grand scheme of, of things. I'm no one. I'm just a servant of God trying to, to live my life humbly and faithfully using the gifts, gifts that he's given me. But as a result of my willingness to just let go of myself mm -hmm. and let go of ego and, and embrace humility, um, he's used me as a vessel for other people, as an example for other people to, to show that like, yes, this is what we need to do. We have to let go of ourselves, mm -hmm. let go of our concept of what it means to be, you know, um, self-made, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and that's why like I was recording a novena, which is a nine day prayer uh, for, for the Hallow app recently. And I discovered the words in this one novena called the surrender novena and the, the phrase at the end is, oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. You take, uh, take care of everything. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what I said when I was on my knees, like crying out in desperation. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is, this works, mm -hmm. this works, but you have to be brought to that place, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, I think the thing that we as humans struggle with on a daily basis sure. is just letting go yeah. and trusting. Mm -hmm. How many of us can just let go and just trust, you know? I think because we have like this idea of surrender almost being like this forfeit, like I forfeit, you know? And it's really like, it's really opposite when you're and walking with God, you know? That's ego. It's like, I forfeit. Right. It's like you, you no, who wants to, who wants to no lose? No one. No one wants to lose <laughs> no. in life. Yeah. Life's about winning. Life's right. about what can you make of yourself? Right. Who can you be? Mm -hmm. What control do you have over your own life? We yeah. don't have control. We have no control. no control. We think we have control. And that's when we get into trouble, when we release that control, mm -hmm. when we get rid of those thoughts and allow God to work through us, that's when magic happens. That's when our careers all of a sudden soar to heights we'd never imagined yeah. before. Yeah. I, mean, I can't tell you that, I mean, I could, but like, nobody wants to hear this, but I could, <laughs> the, the, the amount of just insanity in grace that, that I've received in the last three years, and you know, I don't feel worthy of any of it, mm. but I think that's where he wants me, mm -hmm. you know? Every time I feel like, ah, oh, yeah, and, and um, then I'm reminded, no, 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 no. This, mm. this is what you have to remember. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I got it, I got it, yep. And then something great mm. comes along, something unforeseen happens, and I'm like, God, I couldn't yeah. imagine the gifts and the providence that you're showering on me right now. So, and he's doing the same thing through you. It's and, so beautiful, because I do. I think when you follow Christ, like it's only through surrender that you experience true freedom, true mm -hmm. victory, true joy, true all of these things, mm -hmm. peace. And it's we like you said, it's so hard because there's this like human nature to like try and control. Yeah. 
And same for my life. And the moments when I've just been like, I can't do this, Lord, you know? And I even think about uh, like the prophet Elijah in the Old Testament when, you know, he was running from Jezebel. And I, and I kind of picture like myself just like running from just the issues of life and the weights of life. And just, you know, Elijah knelt down under a tree and just said, Lord, like I can't take it anymore. Like take my life. Like I, this is too much for me. And in that moment, you know, the Lord showed up and gave him what he needed to keep going. And it just is like that point of just like surrender. Like you, I can't do it. Like I'm at the end of myself, but it's like, that's where Christ begins. Like that's where I end is where he can begin. And like, that's how it should be. And I just think that's so cool, you know, and my, and my book is called Made for This Moment. And so like my last question to you is just, you know, in the times that we're living in, what you're doing now, this opportunity that you have been given and the role that you're playing um, like how how would you encourage others or how would you even kind of for yourself say like this is the moment I was made for like I know that God has called me for such a time as this how would I like how like you know you're you were made for this moment and what does that what does that look like to you what does that mean to you how can you walk out of here and walk into your field and in what you're doing with the confidence that I was made for this moment I think it's by continuing to submit myself to his will. I think it's reminding myself that I have to listen to his voice and really discern what he would want me to do, mm. you know? And then by doing that and allowing him to lead, then I'm doing just that. I am where he, exactly where he wants mm. me to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's the best, the best way to do it. Absolutely. It's the only way to do it. <laughs> the only way to do it. Spirit led. Let's close in prayer. Let's do it. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for who you are. Lord, I thank you for what you've done and what you've given us. Lord, we're so undeserving of your grace and of your forgiveness and of your love, Lord, but we receive it in its entirety and in its fullness. And we're so grateful. We're so humbled to be a part of who you are and what you're doing to be a child of God. And I love that we get to live in this world, not looking for a place of belonging or security, but coming from a place of already belonging and knowing that you call us yours. And I just thank you, Lord, for um, the gift of salvation. I thank you for freedom. I thank you for purpose, Lord, that we're not just walking around trying to figure out why we're here, Lord, but I thank you that you have given each and every single one of us, Lord, a gift and a calling and a passion, Lord, that you have called each and every single one of us to do great things for your namesake. I thank you for every single person, Lord, listening. And I pray right now, wherever they're at, Lord, whatever they're going through, whatever they're struggling with, that you would meet them exactly where they're at, that you would show them that you see them, that you hear them, that you love them, that they are not alone in where they are, but that you are right there beside them. And I pray that you would just wrap your arms around them, Lord, that they would feel loved, that they would feel known, that they would stop striving, stop controlling. And just like we were talking about, that they would just surrender, that they would just choose to surrender to you and that that would be the place, Lord, where freedom is experienced, Lord, where purpose is found, Lord, and where they can start to finally live the abundant life that you have called us to live. And then they can begin to make a difference for the kingdom, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for all that you've done, but we thank you for what you're gonna continue to do. And I thank you, Lord, for um, just choosing us, Lord, for loving us, Lord, and for walking with us, Lord. We love you with all of our hearts, Lord, and I thank you for every single person, Lord, listening. Lord, bless them. Lord, be with them, and just let them know that you've got them and that you've got great plans for them, Lord. We love you, and we praise you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. That was beautiful. So, October 19th. October 19th. It's available everywhere. Available everywhere. Yep. Run out and get it as soon as it drops. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And, uh, you're awesome. Well, you're pretty stellar yourself, <laughs> so I'm really excited for you. So. Thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. So download the Hallow app today. Go to the App Store or Google Play, and you can hear Maddie's sessions. You can hear all the uh, stuff that I've narrated, all the prayers, novenas, and um, get closer to Jesus. Thanks so much for being here. God bless you.